The Amazing Spider-Man issue 30 heads to the past when Kindred kills Mysterio for almost saying his name. The villain later goes through the halls of Ravencroft, stopping at one of the cells and looking in, saying it could kill the inmate right there and then, and could laugh while they screamed, since that's what they used to do. Kindred says the man inside was terrifying and made people feel powerless, but that was a long time ago. The man is revealed to be Norman Osborn as Kindred says that the mighty have fallen very far. Spider-Man meanwhile remembers when he got the symbiote from the machine on the planet the Beyonder took him and others to to fight in a secret war. He remembers thinking what's the worst that could happen in bringing a world conquering symbiote back to Earth, but that was only the beginning as the symbiote spawned more and more, including one named Carnage which in turn spawned more, leading them to their current problem where Carnage is trying to bring the symbiote god Null back to life. Luckily Peter and others created a machine to get the codices Carnage needs to waken the god out of anyone who has been infected by a symbiote and destroy them. Carnage showed up however and it forced Spider-Man to take Normie Osborne and Dylan, Eddie's son, and run. Peter drops them at a safe room in Rex's warehouse, but Normie is scared. Peter says that he's scared as well and reveals his face and all he's got to do is remember that underneath Carnage is Norman and Norman is just a man. Norman soon arrives and Peter closes the safe room door, confronting Norman who tells Spider-Man that he really needs to stop calling him Norman. Peter notes that Norman now thinks that he's Cletus Cassidy and kind of wishes he was since it would actually give him a break from the endless back and forth for years now. Years prior, Peter thanks Aunt May for holding a party for Harry Osborn's return from hospital. The doorbell soon rings and Peter answers it, finding all of their friends, including Gwen Stacy, waiting for him. Peter shakes the memory of Gwen and the others away as Norman smashes him into the wall. Peter knows this isn't going to be an easy fight as the memory comes back, seeing Flash arrive back to the party safe and sound from war. Peter tries to stop himself from thinking of his old friends, focusing on beating Norman since he's killing him, so he needs to stop thinking of what he's lost before Norman takes even more from him. In the memory, Norman and Harry soon arrive at the party, and Gwen says that it's nice getting everyone back together like this. Peter Peter remembers what he said next, that it was too good to be true as Norman continues killing him. Sometime before, Kindred says that Norman was once terrifying, but no one was more afraid of him than Peter was. So when Kindred fashioned himself into the being he is now, he thought of Norman often and wanted to be something Peter sees in his nightmares. He tells Norman that Peter still sometimes cries Gwen's name out in his sleep and wonders what MJ might think of that. He says that the thing about Norman is that he knows how to leave a scar and is why he goes after children because of their youthfulness and their possibility and potential, all of which he takes and drowns in death and pain. Kindred knows this is what makes him so much more terrifying and he thinks that they are very alike in that regard. He apologizes to Norman since he would never get the chance to kill Peter, but if it's any solace, he tells Norman that he won long ago, as in the present, Peter is beaten by the carnage infected Norman. The Amazing Spider-Man issue 30 sees the book finally tie into the absolute carnage story event in a really cool way as Nick Spencer uses his new character Kindred as a type of bridge between the stories he's been telling in this book and the event Donny Cates is doing. It was a really well put together story about Norman and a great look at what makes Norman so terrifying to Peter and everything he has stolen from him over the years. It was utterly fantastic and something that I think was really needed for the character who's kind of only now thanks to this event coming back into the mainstream comics. As for absolute carnage event story stuff, there really wasn't that much. We just got like a short fight between the carnage infected Norman and Spider-Man. But now with Spider-Man in Carnage's grasp, it will no doubtably make the event even more interesting. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.